Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kev Tech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over the most common the most common things I did when I was new to IT that I shouldn't have done. So I'm giving you advice based on my personal experience of common mistakes I made when I first started IT. Obviously, you're new to my channel, know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. Today we're going to go over that. So for me, number one, and I'm going to put a time codes on this so you know what I'm talking about for each time code. Number one for me. It's going to be um, not getting not having a mentor. So like when I was brand new to IT, I had I had zero mentors. I never had a mentor in my life. I'm just being honest with you. I don't I don't it's not I don't be, I don't believe in mentorship. I just the, the, I just didn't think of it at the time. So like literally I was just doing everything on my own and just learning on my own, studying on my own, building my own home labs. And that's a common mistake you make when you're brand new because you, you think that. You should be doing everything by yourself, which is not true. At, at least, you know, like you should have someone that you could relate to. Or you could have someone that would help you get a job in IT, you know? So those those things are very important. Like, do you have someone that you could reach out to right now in your circle and in your, in your friends or your LinkedIn that you know has the job that you already want and you can seek advice from that person? So mentorship is very important. Having the right mentor is extremely important. Um. For me, number two, and this is another thing that I talk about all the time. Number two is finding your finding your community. So what do I mean by that? So find a community of like minded individuals that work IT or have a job in IT or need or are trying to break into IT or need advice in IT. People that already have the job that you want or people that already work IT. And there's a lot of there's a lot of free things out there. There's like there's like social meetups. There are discords. There are Slack channels. So like find your community. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It could be Hispanic. It could be African-American. It could be women. It could be for veterans. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, find your community. And I talk about this a lot. Like, your community is very important because if you work together with other people, you will be successful. If you work to, if you work with other people, it will help you. If you have groups that you could find to study A+, plus, Network Plus, Security Plus, that's going to help you as well. Like, CompTIA has their own study groups. Professor Messer has their own study groups. So, like, there are so many things out there that is free that people don't take advantage of. When I was brand new, I didn't, I didn't look, reach out to communities. I literally just tried to do everything by myself. And that's a, that's a big mistake. You can't be doing that. Right. If there are free resources out there, why don't you take advantage of it? So that's number two for me. Um, Number three for me, <laughs> number three for me, and this is common because we all do this is like spray and pray the resume. So like when I was brand new, I was literally using the same resume over and over again for each job that I saw online. I never tailor my resume to the job description or to the job posting. Literally, I'm just like spraying and praying my resume. And it doesn't work that way. Number That's number three. You can't be doing that. You have to fix your resume. So that's a common issue that or a common mistake that we make when we're brand new to IT. We just spray and pray the resume. You can't be doing that. That's not going to help you. Down the long run, you're not going to be able to find a job. And that's probably the reason why you're not getting a job. Your resume probably sucks, right? So if you have a really crappy resume, no one's going to call you. No one's going to reply back to you. It's just a reality of jobs. Um, number four for me is going to be, which I didn't I didn't do at the time when I first started, was reach out to job recruiters. So like, um, this is this is a uh, uh, something that's like 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 it's like you get it's like a hit and miss. Like there are some good job recruiters, there are some bad job recruiters. Some job recruiters that call you and they spam the living hell out of you. And they call you and they give you these crappy jobs or like eight to five paying $15 an hour. And then it's like a senior position. You're like, wait a minute, why are you paying so little? Right. So you have to find a recruiter that cares for you. And you have to find some really good job recruiters, ones that actually do pay well and they, they do care about you and they do, do take care of you. So that's number four for me because, like, when I first started out, I looked at recruiters as an annoyance, right? Like, why is this person calling my phone or spamming my inbox? Like, this, I don't even like this job, right? So uh, for me, number four is going to be recruiters because I still have recruiters that reach out to me, even in my current job. And I have it in my back. I have it in my back pocket, right? So like if, if anything were to happen to me, hypothetically, I could always reach out to these recruiters because they have jobs that are available right now, right? That pay really well. So like I keep the recruiters in my back pocket. I'm talking about good recruiters, not crappy recruiters, good recruiters, if that makes sense. All right. Number five for me is going to be like learning the right skills. And this is another one that I always talk about. Like you have to learn the right skills. Like a lot of people go and look for a job and they learn absolutely nothing about the job. And then when they go for a job interview, 
and they're asked about a specific skill, the person does an interview and they're like, oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, I would Google that. You, like, you, if if you actually done the the time and training, the home labs, which I always talk about, hands on training, right? It's number five, hands on training, and get the and actually learn the skills needed for the job. People will take a chance on you. If you know what you're talking about, people will be like, okay, this person actually took the time to learn these skills, right? So that's very important, and I talk about this a lot. Like, skills are very important. Home labs are very important. So those things are very important. So when I was brand new to IT, I didn't look at that. Then when I got my second job, I created Active Directory from scratch on a VM with Server 2012 R2. And I installed Active Directory. I did group policy. I did shared drive permissioning. I did user accounts, account creation, password reset, uh, unlocking accounts, resetting accounts, expiring accounts, disabling accounts. I talked about that during my job interview. And the reason why I got my job was because of the home labs. And... If you go to my Discord right now, a lot of people got jobs because of their home labs. And that is what I call the on-demand skills, right? If you have the right skills, then you could sell yourself and you could talk about it when you go into a job interview. So skills are important, right? The next thing I'm going to talk about, which it's like, this really depends where you live, right? It's certification. So certifications are very important. So like, you may need A+, you may need Network+, plus, you may need Security+. plus. You may need a, a Microsoft certification. You may need an Azure certification. You may need a Google certification. You may need a Cisco certification. It really depends where you live. It really depends where you're at. So that's very important for me because when I first started, like I was looking at the A+, plus, I took the A+. Plus. I didn't get any search after that, but then you go to these jobs and they're asking, yeah, I can't hire you because you don't have the cert. Or I can't hire you because you don't have a degree, right? So it's like, you may need a degree, you may need a cert. That's the other one. The last one for me, which is dear to my heart, which I always talk about, is networking. So a lot of people do not take the time to network. A lot of people take the time to study certifications, um, build home labs, but they don't take the time to fix their LinkedIn profile. And your LinkedIn profile tells a story about you. Your LinkedIn profile tells what have you done professionally in your career. Obviously, LinkedIn is not Facebook. Let's <laughs> talk about that real quick, you know, because people think LinkedIn is Facebook. It feels like it sometimes, right, where you, you see these really strange posts, right? But... LinkedIn, LinkedIn is important. Take the time to fix your LinkedIn profile, your LinkedIn profile picture, your LinkedIn URL, um, enable the feature section, enable, enable um your your um, you know, obviously go to go in there and and enable the, the feature section so you could post your certifications, your project work, your websites, your GitHub, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Remember that. Your resume is not the same as your LinkedIn profile, so make sure that these are two different things. Put what you have, what put what current job you're currently working at, and what you're doing there, and a little bit about that. Um, put your skills in there. Make sure you try to get some endorsements, some recommendations, um, and try to network with people. Try to talk to people, and 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 obviously, I say do it in a genuine way because a lot of people just like just add people without even getting to know them. And this is the issue that I have on LinkedIn. Like, I didn't use LinkedIn a long time ago because I, I, I didn't take it professionally. I didn't take it seriously at the time. Now I do, right? So the problem with LinkedIn is that a lot of people add people without properly introducing themselves. And that is not how you how you connect on LinkedIn. And I get this all the time. I get people adding me and they say hi. And I'm like, I don't even know who you are. Like, why should I respond to you, right? So it's like, LinkedIn is good to network. LinkedIn is good and bad. It's bad because if you don't know what you're doing on LinkedIn, people are not going to add you. People are not going to respond to you. So like if you go and tell someone, hi, how are you doing? I'm like, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. And I don't owe you anything. No offense to anyone that is new to IT. I don't owe you. I owe you absolutely nothing because you're asking, you're coming to me for a favor. I already know that. But like, what can you do to help me? And then I'll help you afterwards. You got to look at it that way. A lot of people go to LinkedIn asking for a favor. And if you respond to me in a certain way that it's in favor of you, obviously, not me, I'm probably just going to ignore you. It's just the reality of LinkedIn. So like people that are like actual hiring managers and, and job recruiters, managers, directors, CEO, CFO, CISOs, all these important people that, are, that work IT leadership roles, if you go up to them and send them your resume – without properly introducing yourself, they're going to look at you like, what is wrong with this person, right? So LinkedIn is very important, but you got to know how to how to talk. 
I obviously add a note when you add somebody and properly introduce yourself and build genuine connections. And that's just a reality on LinkedIn. People don't like to hear that, but like, that's how it is. Um, and that's it. That's it for me. During social events too. I always talk about that. That's it for me. That's all the advice I can give you. When I was doing IT, I wish I knew all this stuff. I wish I knew about uh, LinkedIn. I wish I knew about having the right skills. I wish I knew about getting the right certification. I wish I knew about mentoring. I wish I knew about social communities that are out there like meetups and discords and Slack channels, et cetera, et cetera. If I knew all those things, man, it, it would take me less time to be where I am today because of those things that I, that I know right now. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this helps you out and have a wonderful Saturday. Take care. Peace. Later. Bye.